Howder is an elf of the realm of Lorien under the rulership of Celebor and the Lady Galadriel. In both the book and movie version of The Fellowship of the Ring, he is the leader of the patrol that takes the Fellowship captive once they cross into the borders of Lorien. In the movie version of Two Towers, he leads a contingent of elven warriors in the Battle of Helm's Deep, though tragically he and all the men under his command do not survive the battle. And contrary to popular belief, he is not the same person as Glorfindel. Okay, that's not popular belief, that was just my own ineptitude and laziness as a video maker. But today, we are going to be correcting that mistake and taking an actual look at the actual elf, Glorfindel. The event that has most likely gained Glorfindel the greatest amount of fame, both in and out of universe, is his slaying of a Balrog in one-on-one -on -one combat, a feat only equaled by one other elf. Ironically, both of these occurrences were during the Fall of Gondolin, one of the three principal tales of the First Age in Silmarillion, alongside the tale of Baron Luthien and the tragedy of the Children of Hurin. Basically, this was the original Dark Lord, Melkor, sacking one of the last great cities of the elven civilization. Glorfindel was involved in the evacuation of this city, and it was on a high mountain pass that his progress was blocked by a Balrog. The two fought an epic duel, which ultimately resulted in both of them tumbling off the cliff, apparently a favorite tactic of the Balrog. Ultimately, Glorfindel slew his opponent, but was killed in the attempt. The other slaying of a Balrog by an elven warrior what had much the same result. I forget if it was the King of Gondolin himself or just the Captain of the Guard, but regardless, he faced and slew Gothmog, Captain of the Balrogs, back in Gondolin's city square. Gothmog is not to be confused with the other Gothmog from the Return of the King movie, who, although certainly impressive, given that he holds roughly the same title and position as Azog, despite clearly being less physically capable, is still not a Balrog and thus much, much less impressive. If it is not the fact that he killed a Balrog, then the most impressive thing Glorfindel has done or is known for is the fact that he came back to life. Elves are not like humans, their souls do not depart the physical world once they die, rather they just kind of wander around until they find themselves back in Valinor. Although it is extremely rare, it is possible for an elf to be returned to life back in Middle-earth or Arda, whichever term you want to use, though Middle-earth is only a small section of Arda, but it's really confusing so I'll probably just keep calling it Middle-earth. Glorfindel is the only elf I can think of off the top of my head who was allowed to do this, taking on physical form again after falling to the Balrog and the Fall of Gondolin, which I guess could also be called the Fall of Glorfindel. Glorfindel the White would continue to be a key player in the events of Middle-earth for years to come. My memory fails me as to whether or not he was involved in the War of the Last Alliance, but I do know he was involved in the series of battles with the evil kingdom of Angmar. This wicked kingdom of wicked men rose and was led by the Witch King of Angmar, who is called that for a reason. This civilization was responsible for the fall of Arnor, Gondor's sister kingdom, which is actually where uh, Aragorn is descended from. Glorfindel fought against Einmar and even battled the Witch King one on one. It is in fact Glorfindel who made the prophecy that the Witch King would not die by the hands of man. So one wonders if Glorfindel wasn't just thinking that he was going to be the one to kill the Witch King, and since he is obviously an elf, his prophecy would be true. Regardless, in the end it turned out to be Eowyn and a certain hobbit who led to the downfall of the Witch King. One can only hope that Glorfindel, Einmar, and the rest will appear and get further uh, fleshed out in the upcoming Aragorn TV series. Indeed, I think it's high time that Glorfindel actually makes it into an adaption. 
As is somewhat infamous in the fanbase, Glorfindel does not appear in the Lord of the Rings movies. Regardless of what you may or may not have heard Sunraiser say on previous, very mistaken occasions. Rather, he is replaced by Arwen, which, although it makes some sense on a story level to introduce her relatively early on, and to give her uh, more to do than just stand around in the background, it's honestly quite a shame that such an awesome character as Glorfindel did not make it into the movies, um, much like Tom Bombadil. However, it goes even further for poor Glorfindel. He is not in the original animated Lord of the Rings either, being replaced by Legolas of all people. So it seems this poor guy, for all his awesomeness, just can't catch a break when it comes to adaptions. Now that I am not a complete Middle-earth noob, I find the character of Glorfindel quite fascinating. He is one of two, um, linking elves who unite third age stories with those of the first age. The other would be Galadriel, who was originally introduced in Lord of the Rings, but Tolkien enjoyed the character enough he retroactively added her to the first age and Silmarillion. I believe something similar happened with Glorfindel, as there was originally two separate elves with that title, the one who saves Aragorn and the Hobbits in the Fellowship of the Ring, and a separate elf who died fighting a Balrog in the fight of in the fall of Gondolin, I should say. It wasn't much of a fight, it was a very one-sided battle. However, of course, Tolkien retconned these two to be the same elven character, even um, using the idea that elves could come back to life, much like the Astari or wizards, as was the case with Gandalf. However, I'm still not entirely sure on the question of who would win a duel between Glorfindel and Aragorn, and I'm not actually going to attempt to address that here, and rather save that for a video far off in the future, if I ever actually get around to it. One more thing before we end, I do feel a shout out of sorts is uh, necessary to the epic channel Men of the West, as it is a proper Lord of the Rings lore discussion channel that never confuses its elves. It also uh, very much so inspired my making of this video and kind of my different-ish style this time around, so if you are interested in all things Middle-earth, I strongly recommend you check out his channel because he is awesome.